Welcome to episode 3 of my Dark Ops Challenge Guide. If you missed the first two episodes, I'll put both links in the description. Today's challenge is Dr. Lung. Kill an enemy underwater when you are both close to drowning. The reward for completing this challenge is a bit disappointing. The calling card you receive depicts a bloated face holding his breath with incoming bullets. So one of the new additions to Black Ops 3 is underwater combat. You can swim quickly and easily with your weapon up. You can also sprint underwater, and you can rise and sink by jumping or crouching. While it is nice to have full combat underwater in this game, your underwater lifespan is not unlimited. At a certain point, your character starts to run out of breath, and at that point, you can just resurface and go back down if you want. Or you can make a dramatic exit out of the water, and you can thrust jump out and surprise enemies. So let's first discuss the window of opportunity you have to complete this challenge. As the description says, you have to kill an enemy underwater when you are both close to drowning. Surprisingly, you can hold your breath for a very long time in this game. You're also given three warning pulses to indicate that you're drowning. On the fourth one, however, you die. The total time it takes to drown is 16.033 seconds. Luckily, the time frame for completing this challenge is nowhere near that long. And this challenge is one and done, by the way, which made doing research a bit tricky. What I did was use my son's account to repeatedly complete the challenge. After each time I completed it, I'd reset the game immediately afterwards, so that way it wouldn't save. By doing this, I was able to extensively test tactics, as well as the time frame to complete the challenge. Typically, it took about 10 to 12 seconds after submerging in water to register the challenge. However, the shortest time I managed to get that still rewarded the challenge was 8.767 seconds. So as long as both you and your enemy have been submerged for 8.7 seconds or longer, the challenge will count. So now that we know the time frame necessary, let's talk about map choice. Unfortunately, despite the emphasis on water combat, a lot of the maps have very little to no water at all. Take Aquarium, for example. One would assume this would be filled with water. While it does have multiple spots you can swim, they're all very short in length. Not only this, but they have no enclosures, meaning you can freely jump out of the water. And that's not what we want for this challenge. You need a body of water large enough that your enemy is going to be submerged and swimming for that entire 8 seconds. So I tested every map in the game, and only two maps passed the Dr. Lung test. Metro and Hunted. Now of these two maps, Hunted comes up in the map rotation and gets voted way, way more often than Metro. I know some people that have played Metro less than 10 times since the game came out. So with that said, I'm going to briefly discuss Metro, while the majority of my strategies will be on Hunted. So first, Metro. I'm always surprised by how many people didn't even realize there is water on this map. Although to be fair, they do have it set up where it looks like a death pit, rather than a safe area to drop and swim into. The tactics for this map are simple. Your best bet is at the very start of the match. As soon as the match begins, hop off to the side and into the water and start swimming. By the time you reach the halfway point, you'll have been submerged long enough for the challenge to count. You just need to hope that your enemy did the exact same thing. If they did, you'll meet in the middle, and should you kill them, you should easily complete the challenge. But again, a majority of people don't even know about the water on this map. Not to mention there's no enclosures the enemy has to swim through, so they may not even submerge at all. So while it is possible to get lucky and complete the challenge on this map, it's not very practical. Hunted, on the other hand, is absolutely perfect. The waterway on Hunted is very long, flowing almost the entire length of the map. Not only this, there is an enclosed space that the enemy has to be submerged to go through, and these are perfect conditions for completing this challenge. Let me first show you the two key locations you can attempt to do this from, and then I'll discuss a few tactics to make it even easier. Both of these spots are equally useful. The first one is what I refer to simply as Bridge. It's in the cave near A Flag and has a bridge that you can jump off into the water. The second spot is at the completely opposite end. There's a doorway here, and the spot I'm referring to is just to the left of it. From here, you can see people coming through the tunnel and toward you, or you can see people swimming out of the doorway and to the tunnel. I'll refer to this area simply as doorway. So let's talk about the doorway location first. When you post up to the left of this door frame, people swimming through it will more often than not be completely oblivious to your presence. They'll typically keep on swimming straight through the enclosed tunnel, which makes them ripe for the picking. You can also attract radar junkies by firing an unsilenced weapon as well. As soon as they swim by you, start the chase. Remember, you have to wait at least 8.7 seconds, so don't get too hasty and blow your load early. I can't tell you how many times I personally did this. Patience is a virtue here. You typically want to shoot them right after they exit in the enclosed tunnel. Now as for the bridge location, your objective is basically the same. Post up behind the bridge itself and lie in wait. There's two scenarios that can happen. Someone will jump off the bridge and into the water in front of you, in which case you simply need to trail them through the enclosed tunnel. 
or the other option will be that they'll be swimming towards you from the enclosed tunnel, in which case they've likely already been underwater for a few good seconds. I must note that there's a waterfall directly in front of this area. This obscures your vision of the tunnel. To counter this, I highly suggest running the thermal scope. The thermal can see right through this, making identifying your enemies extremely easy. The target finder site will also notify you of an incoming enemy, but just by flashing red, you won't see their actual outline at all. So that's the gist of what you want to do at these two locations. But now let's throw some tactics into the mix. There's two problems you'll likely encounter here. Number one, you can't really predict what the enemy is going to do. At any given moment while you're chasing them from these stalking points, they could easily rise up and grab a breath of air. It's of great importance that you do not let this happen, as it'll reset your 8 second window of opportunity to complete the challenge. Number two, you cannot allow them to kill you should the time requirement be met. If you've both been submerged for that 8.7 seconds, and he gets to jump on you and wins the gunfight, you'll be regretting it for a long time. Luckily, there's a remedy to both these issues. First, you yourself picking the location that your enemy meets their demise is crucial. Ideally, you want to engage them in the enclosed tunnel. By the time they reach this point from either the bridge or the doorway, they'll likely be very close to that 8.7 second target that we've got. So what can we do to keep them submerged as well as prevent them from killing us first? Batteries, kinetic armor, and concussion grenades. When just one bullet can determine the outcome of such a crucial underwater gunfight, there's no greater specialist ability to have than the kinetic armor. Providing that extra bit of protection will more often than not ensure you come out ahead when the epic showdown occurs. As for concussion grenades, I must note that throwing any lethals or tacticals underwater slows them down by a lot. They basically deploy in slow motion. The idea is to equip and throw two stun grenades while your enemy is in the enclosed tunnel. This will slow down their movement as well as disorient them, giving you both extended time as well as an easier target to hit. Turn your kinetic armor on after you deploy the second concussion grenade and you'll be well on your way to getting the challenge complete. If you have Firebreak unlocked, you can even couple his Heat Wave ability in there instead of the Kinetic Armor, giving you essentially three concussion grenades at your disposal. Another option is the ever handy Smoke Grenade. Anything that'll distract your enemy, keep them underwater, and conceal your view are important for this challenge. And the Smoke Grenade will do all of those things. Again though, keep in mind of the slow deploy time. My favorite thing to do is throw both of them in the enclosed tunnel, which hides you from their view. They'll casually swim through, wondering what's going on. When they emerge, you'll already be looking down your thermal scope and should reap the benefits of catching them off guard. There's also three other specialist abilities that could potentially come in handy. One of these is Spectre's Active Camo. You can use this to further conceal your presence when posting up at the bridge area or to the left of the doorway. He blends in extremely well with the water, making it very difficult to see his presence. The element of surprise is the entire goal of this challenge. Reaper's Psychosis is also ideal for confusing your enemy. Unfortunately though, the clones don't fare too well underwater. In fact, they don't move at all. And I think this may be a glitch. Regardless, they could distract the enemy just long enough for you to hit that 8.7 second time frame that we need. Lastly, Ruin's overdrive ability works underwater and increases the speed at which you swim. This could be useful when chasing down your enemy. I timed myself swimming from one end to the other. And without overdrive, it took 9.883 seconds to do. Now with overdrive, it took 8.2 seconds. It doesn't sound like much, but it's definitely a noticeable increase in swim speed. I'll tell you one thing, underwater combat makes your enemies do weird things. I've seen people react to dead bodies underwater as if they were actually alive, or I've seen people just stop and stand completely still as if no one can even see them. If you encounter one of these newbie boobies, take full advantage of their carelessness. One thing's for certain, if your enemies notice you underwater more than once, they'll make every effort to come back and kill you repeatedly. Allow me to show you an example here with this enemy named Ray. When I first encountered him, I didn't have my thermal scope unlocked yet, so I was using the tracker sight. It lit up red, so I knew he was coming out of the enclosed tunnel, but I couldn't see him. Somehow, he managed to shoot me with what appeared to be a lucky shot. Fast forward a few seconds, and the same thing happens again. I have no idea how he saw me based on the kill cam. And again, for a third time, the exact same scenario happens. But just my luck, he comes back a fourth time. This time, I decide to engage him in the enclosed tunnel. I cold cock him into oblivion with two stun grenades, activate my kinetic armor, and kill him. Sadly, this time he brought a buddy with him, who managed to kill me immediately after. But not before I successfully completed the Dr. Lung challenge. Now let's talk game mode and class setup. There's only two game modes I recommend, Free For All and Team Deathmatch. While objective game modes can work, any good objective player will be focused on wherever the current objective is. For example, hardly anyone will swim through the water when the robot and safeguard is near the objective at the other end of the map. 
Based on my extensive research on the hunted map, I encountered way more people utilizing the waterways in free for all and team deathmatch. As for a class setup, I recommend using an LMG for the massive ammo capacity benefit. As I mentioned earlier, the thermoscope is invaluable underwater, and LMGs pair up nicely with this scope. Quick draw is also crucial, and I also recommend grip. You'll want two tactical grenades, either concussion or smoke. For perks, in tier 3 I suggest blast suppressor. My reasoning for this is that you need to constantly resurface for air, and you can sometimes boost accidentally while doing this. Even if you lightly tap the crouch button, sometimes it still shoots you right out of the water. And this causes you to show up on the radar, so Blast Suppressor will eliminate this. By the way, I tested Awareness and Dead Silence, and they both seem to have no effect underwater due to the water noises. For Tier 2, I recommend the Tracker Perk and Hardwired. For some reason or another, you can see footprints underwater with Tracker, and this can help you spot enemies that you may have otherwise missed, especially due to the bland colors of being underwater. Hardwired is necessary to counter those people running the Sixth Sense Perk, if you stalk an enemy underwater and they have the sixth sense on, they'll be alerted of your presence and likely whip around to attack you. Hardwired will reduce this effect. You don't necessarily need anything in perk 1, and at this point all your points will be used up anyway. And that's all there is to it. Play the map hunted on free for all or team deathmatch. Utilize either the bridge or doorway location and await an enemy to swim by you. Then begin stalking your prey, keeping a comfortable distance until you feel confident that the 8.7 seconds necessary to complete the challenge has been achieved. Use everything you have at your disposal to ensure your enemy is both distracted and kept submerged underwater. You can slow and disorient your enemy with concussion grenades, confuse them and conceal yourself with smoke grenades, psychosis or active camo, buff your defense with kinetic armor, or increase your swimming speed with overdrive. Whichever you prefer, you'll want to make sure you and your enemy are both on an even breathing playing field, so you don't have to abort the chase and get air before he's even gasping for breath. Remember, you both have to be close to drowning. With a little luck and the appropriate tactics, you'll emerge the victor while they sink to the depths of oblivion.